Close your eyes and transport yourself back 60 million years. The air is thick with humidity and the lush, steamy rainforests of South America teem with life. As you navigate through the dense undergrowth, a dark, sinuous shape in the water catches your eye. This isn't just any predator, it's the mighty Titanoboa, the most colossal snake to have ever roamed the Earth. Join us as we delve into the story of this prehistoric titan, a behemoth that time forgot. The story of Titanoboa's discovery began in 2002 in the Colombian coal mines of Cerrojon, a hotspot for fossil hunters due to its rich deposits from the Paleocene Epoch. A team of researchers, including Dr. Carlos Yaramillo from the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute and Dr. Jonathan Block from the University of Florida, stumbled upon some unusually large vertebrae partially embedded in a coal layer. The expedition ended in 2004, and the Titanoboa fossils, due to their massive size, were mistakenly labelled as that of a crocodile. As Block put it, my only excuse for not recognising them is that I've picked up snake vertebrae before, and I said, these can't be snake vertebrae. It's like somebody handed me a mouse skull the size of a rhinoceros and told me, that's a mouse. It's just not possible. The specimens were then transported to the Florida Museum of Natural History, and it wasn't until 2009 that Dr. Jason Head and his team identified that they belonged to a new genus and species of enormous snake, naming the genus Titanoboa and the species Cerrojonensis. In 2011, a new expedition to the Cerrojon mine unearthed additional remarkable fossils of the giant serpent. Most notably, the team discovered three disarticulated skulls. These discoveries were pivotal, as snake skulls are rarely preserved in the fossil record due to their brittle nature. Since its discovery, more than 30 individuals of Titanoboa have been found at the Cerrojon site, but no other fossils of this species have been found elsewhere. Unsurprisingly, the fossil record reveals a lot about the biology and ecology of this unique animal, including its ferocious appearance. The name Titanoboa means titanic boa, and it is fitting for this colossal creature. The primary remains that have been discovered are the vertebrae and ribs. These skeletal pieces provide crucial insights into the snake's size and structure. The sheer size of the vertebrae, some of which larger than a human hand, immediately hinted at the creature's massive size. By comparing these bones to those of modern snakes and using scaling techniques, scientists have estimated that Titanoboa could reach lengths of up to 42 feet, 13 meters, and weigh as much as 1,135 kilograms, 2,500 pounds. This makes it the largest snake that has ever been discovered. As given away by the name, morphological studies of the fossil suggest that the titan was closely related to the boas, a group of non-venomous snakes known for their powerful constriction abilities. Like modern boas, this prehistoric titan likely had a robust body built for strength and quick bursts of speed, utilised to strike from ambush. Its skin may have been adorned with intricate patterns, not only aiding in camouflage, but also enhancing its predatory capabilities as it lurked in the waters of ancient South America, waiting to unleash its impressive speed and power on unsuspecting prey. Now, while the lower jaw of Titanoboa has not been directly found, scientists can make educated guesses about its structure based on a few skull pieces that they do have, and comparisons to other extinct and modern species. Much like modern constrictors, Titanoboa would use its muscles to constrict its prey, suffocating and crushing it with immense pressure before consuming it. Estimations of this force can be derived from two critical pieces of evidence, the impressive size of the snake's vertebrae fossils and, you guessed it, comparisons with constriction abilities of modern boas. The largest boa alive today, the green anaconda, can constrict with a force between 6 and 12 pounds per square inch that's comparable to the pressure of a large dog's bite. In contrast, Titanoboa is estimated to have had a crushing force of 400 pounds per square inch, similar to the bite force of a large alligator or the pressure of depth at 850 feet underwater. But as is often the case, many of our inferences are speculative. One thing is for sure though, the strength of the Titanoboa would have made this snake a formidable predator. The habitat of the Titanoboa provides a fascinating glimpse into a post-dinosaur world. 
Detailed analysis of fossilised flora and fauna from the Serrahon Formation reveals that it lived in an environment characterised by extreme heat and humidity, with lush rainforests that were in many ways more intense versions of the tropical ecosystems we know today. During the Serpent's era, the Earth was experiencing a significant greenhouse climate effect. Studies suggest that the average annual temperature may have been as high as 30 to 34 degrees Celsius, 86 to 93 degrees Fahrenheit, significantly warmer than than today's tropical rainforests. Such warm conditions would have been ideal for an ectothermic creature like Titanoboa, allowing it to maintain a high metabolic activity necessary for sustaining its massive size. The Serrahon rainforest was a thriving ecosystem with thick canopies of towering trees and large leafy plants. These created a dark, damp understory where the behemoth would have lurked. The undergrowth was dense with ferns and other smaller plants, providing ideal cover and hunting grounds for this massive predator. The fossil records indicate that Titanoboa shared its environment with various other peculiar organisms, including extremely large fish, turtles and crocodilomorphs, with the latter likely fighting for dominance with the giant snake. The presence of these large aquatic and semi-aquatic creatures suggests that water bodies, rivers, lakes and swamps were abundant and crucial to the ecosystem's food web. The waterways would have facilitated the snake's movement and served as a strategic advantage for ambushing prey. The sedimentary layers in the area, now mined for coal, were once the bed of an extensive wetland system, capturing and preserving the remains of this ancient rainforest's inhabitants. The extinction of Titanoboa likely occurred during the late Paleocene, before the transition to the Eocene Epoch. While Titanoboa thrived in the hot, humid climate of the middle to late Paleocene, about 58 to 60 million years ago, changes in its ecosystem or competition from other species may have contributed to its disappearance. These changes were part of the ongoing environmental shifts during the Paleocene, rather than the more dramatic changes that occurred at the Paleocene-Eocene boundary. One of the most significant changes in this period was a gradual shift in global climate. As temperatures began to cool, the once humid tropical environments in which Titanoboa thrived started to change. The lush rainforest that provided a perfect habitat for the giant snake slowly transformed into drier, more open landscapes. This changing climate and habitat likely profoundly impacted Titanoboa's survival. As the dense, swampy forests it called home diminished, so too did its hunting grounds and hiding spots. The shift in vegetation also affected the abundance and distribution of its prey, making it harder for the snake to find sufficient food. Moreover, the cooling climate might have directly impacted Titanoboa's physiology. As an exothermic reptile, it relied on environmental heat to regulate its body temperature and metabolism. The lower temperatures would have slowed its growth, reproduction and activity levels, making it more vulnerable to competition and predation. Speaking of competition, the changing environment of the late Paleocene also gave rise to new species that could have challenged the snake's dominance. Smaller, more agile snakes better adapted to the new conditions might have outcompeted Titanoboa for resources. The emergence of new predators, such as early mammals, could have also posed a threat, especially to younger, smaller individuals. The reproductive strategy of Titanoboa could have been yet another factor in its vulnerability. Like many large reptiles, it likely had a slow reproductive rate, investing considerable energy into producing a limited number of offspring. In a rapidly changing environment, this low reproductive output would have made it difficult for the population to recover from losses and adapt to new challenges. In the end, it was almost certainly a combination of factors. Climate change, habitat loss, shifting prey dynamics, new competitors and predators, and its own biological limitations that sealed Titanoboa's fate. Thanks for joining me, my fellow apes, on this expedition into the extinct. If this glimpse into bygone biodiversity intrigued you, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell as we continue to explore more of the fascinating world that once was.